we just heard a little bit about uh, UV, and now we're going to hear about one of the latest uh, incarnations. Uh, so Ramya Malanya is a developer of the RUV method, uh, RUV3 PRPS, if I got that right? Sorry. Uh, and he's going to talk a bit about that today and his work applying it to the TCGA data. Yeah, thanks, Peter. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, talking about the, uh, it's good to have a, one uh, speaker talking about the RUV. It makes my, my talk easier. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the RUV3, uh, how to use RUV3 PR approach to remove larvae size, purity, and batch effects. Sorry, I don't have time to talk about the purity, but I'm going to talk about the larvae size and batch effects today. Uh, is that the talk is going to be a snapshot of the paper that we published in Nature Biotech uh, two months ago. Uh, it's a pretty long paper. I, mean, I don't have time to explain everything here today. Please have a look if you are interested. All the code, our package, and our, and, uh, and our shiny is on my GitHub. Uh, it's not in a great uh, uh, package yet, but uh, we will have it in soon. Yeah, uh, for just before uh, talking to you about the REV3, uh, for, for, for people who are working with TCGA, it's really pain to work with the TCGA because pretty the information information pretty sparse everywhere, clinical information, everything. What we have done here, we, we collected all the TCGA, all the cancer types, we put it together in a very nice uh, uh, summarized experiment object. Specifically, we have all the batch informations, which is really hard to get the batch information for, from TCGA. You have it, all the cancer types here, and this summarized experiments. You can see we've got the counts, we've got the FPKM, FPKM plus upper quartile. These are TCGA normalized, a lot of information, uh, sample annotations, everything. It's, it's much easier to use this database. And, and uh, uh, Peter suggested to have a bioconductor package that's putting these uh, things together make things easier for, for TCGA user. Probably we do it pretty soon. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm gonna talk about the RUV3 very uh, briefly. I'm not gonna talk about the statistic behind RUV3, but if you have any questions, please come to me and have a chat after the talk. This is the model. We are in a log, uh, in, in, in a linear, linear world is not a count. This is the, the Y is your input for individual gene. You have a X beta plus W alpha. To reach to the W alpha, which is the unwanted variation term, we need two main components. <clears throat> Technical replicates to get alpha, which is gonna be gene-wise specific, and, look at, and, and we need the negative control genes, genes that are not affected by your uh, biological factor of interest, but they must be affected by unwanted variation. And technical replicates the same samples put in different batches. <clears throat> uh, the method has been adopted in different areas, in the SEMERGE for single cell, CYTO for, for the CYTO data, uh, the previous speaker talked about RUV3 for the protomics, and August Salim uh, uh, developed a, the negative binomial version of the RUV for the single cell for those people that believe in the count, not the log of the count. All right, uh, if you want to work on the TCGA or any other, other RNSC that you don't have any technical replicates, uh, how we can use RUV3? Because RUV3 requires technical replicates to estimate the alpha. Uh, uh, one possible solution is the one of the solution is the uh, using the PRPS approach, which I'm going to explain it with a, a two examples. <clears throat> All right, uh, what's a PRPS? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I've, I make a, a cartoon here. It's just made up numbers. Uh, we have got the three, two batches: batch A and batch batch one and two uh, in green and red. And we have got two biological populations: A and B. Let's say the subtypes or treatment control, whatever that you have in your data set, uh, and you do a PCA, you can see the first PC is, is a batches, is not biology, and you're gonna remove that, that uh, uh, batch effects here or unwanted variation. <laughs> what we do, well, we first identify the batches, which is one and two, and then we go to first batch, batch in the green, and we look at the first, the, the, the biological population A here. We average these three samples from the same biological population. We average them, we add one extra column, in the data by averaging, we call it pseudo samples. Averaging all three samples here from the batch one, we have one pseudo sample. We go to batch two, we find the same biology, the A. We average these three here, and, and then we, we add another extra samples here. This is another pseudo sample. These two pseudo samples, we treat it as a pseudo replicates. It's like a technical replicates. They are from the same biology, the major variation between them, because we, we look at the differences between technical replicates to estimate the alpha, the major variation between the technical, that these pseudo replicates is gonna be batch rather than biology. And by averaging, we try to not capturing 
biology in the, our audio samples. And the same we do it for B as well. The B, B samples here, we average them. We have a one pseudo samples here. We go to batch two, average them, have another pseudo samples, and these two is going to be another pseudo replicates. And at the end, in the hope that you you can get the uh, batch removed and, and get the biology right. That's a PRPS approach for batches, but you may have other other problems like purity. If you want to remove tumor purity in cancer RNA seq or larvae size, you need to have more PRPS. Let's talk about the larvae size a bit. Let's see we have got a larvae size in PC2. You can see the samples are pretty spread in PC2. Let's say this is a larvae size. How we can remove the larvae size using PRPS plus the batches? We had the PRPS for batch. We can have another PRPS says for for larvae size. All right. In the, in, the, in the first batch, we order samples from the A biology, biology block group A, and then, and then we, we take the top three, we average them through the pseudo samples, bottom three, average them pseudo samples, and these two is going to be another pseudo replicates. And the differences between these two samples are going to be larger size. And we do it for the, the biological group B as well in the batch one, the same things. We have another set of PRPS, another thing, batch two. And you get another set of PRPS for the larvae size. And we put together, you can repeat these things for the purity. You can order your sample based on the purity, sample with the high and low purity, match them up, and then, and then put in RUV3. And you can put everything, larvae size, batches, uh, purity, and RUV3 can, can remove all of them in a one, one go. Okay. If you have such a things, I hope you don't. Uh, we can put all the one biology, one batch, another biology, another batch, complete confounding is going to be a headache. And probably RUV3 PRPS is not going to work because if you average A here and average B here uh, and, and treat them as the PRPS, probably this is kind of biology there as well. In this case, I would recommend to use RUV4, 2, or RUVG just for differential expression analysis, not for normalization. All right, that's a pretty uh, short uh, explanation about RUV. Please, if you are interested in the method, I'll read the paper. Uh, the TCGA, I think uh, uh, you, you talked. You heard talk about the CATI in the abacus is one of the largest, uh, it is the largest, not one of the, is the largest cancer database. And there's a, uh, uh, 33 cancer types, 11,000 samples, different modalities, and, and there are more than 10,000 publication using the TCGA. All right, <clears throat> what are the sources of unwanted variation in the TCGA? It's not just only TCGA in the RNSC could have these sources. It's a larvae size, it's a major unwanted variation in bulk RNA-seq. The batch effects, different platforms, and purity. Purity for those that are working only on cancer cells, not the whole tissue. Purity is going to be unwanted variation. You need to think about purity when you are working on this area. All right, and the unwanted variation can change the downstream analysis. Can, you, know, can, you can have a false discovery or misleading, misleading discovery or, or mis, mis, misdiscovery as well. There's going to be a lot of problems if you do not account for batch effects. Uh, I'm not going to, you don't expect to read all the, uh, Details here, we identify all the sources of unwanted variation in all TCGA, is all the uh, problems which I'm gonna talk about one of them, one of the cancer types today. Uh, the key point I might talk is here, is this slide, and, and which is not, uh, not been that appreciated in bulk, has been appreciated in the single cell, but not the bulk rna uh, so far. This is the, the rectum adenocarcinoma. We have uh, these samples here, is a larvae size after removing all lowly exposed genes. You can see that there are like a two batches or two group of samples with huge larvae size differences. Uh, if you look at this data set, you may say, okay, that's using CPM, TMM, or those scaling factors that you have a one scaling factors applied to individual genes in the hope that you fix all genes. The assumption here, if you use those scaling factors, like things that I put here, these, these scale, that all genes should be proportional to these scaling factors. And, and, and otherwise you can't fix every gene. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here. This is the first, first example. In the Y axis, you've got the expression of a gene, the genes here. In the X axis, we've got the samples. These are row counts, FPKM, FPKM plus upper quartal and REV3. You can see it in the row counts, you can see the, the differences, the, the, the behavior of the gene, which is similar to what we can see it in the in the scaling factors. If you apply the scaling factors, you're gonna fix it. That's the assumption, which is good. There are genes that uh, is here. These differences is larger uh, compared to the what we have in the scaling factors. 
you can improve it, but not enough. It's not adequate to get to get uh, these guys fixed. You can see, see the, like a batch effects differences. But uh, still, we are not getting worse. The worst things here is, is the, when genes are not affected by level size. You can see here this gene here in the raw counts. We don't see that 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 problem that you can see in, in the level size. If you apply the, the scaling factors, you're going to add level size variation to those genes, which is not ideal for the RNA normalization. And interesting enough, we have, we have seen genes. The expression pattern is opposite compared to the scaling factors. You're going to make those genes even worse. And, and, and there are, it's not like a couple of genes, it's a pretty remarkable number of genes that have these kind of behavior. And is, you, may, you may argue, okay, this is a batch effects, it's not larvae size, and uh, maybe batch is more complex than larvae size. We have looked at the, uh, I will show that one, we will look at a couple of TCJ, which everything has been done in one batch. Even in RNA-seq, everything in one batch, we, 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 we didn't see that all genes are proportional to larvae size. If you use those scaling factors, you, you may end up with some uh, you know, adding noise or, or not fixing all gene, gene uh, expression. What could happen, this is the survival of one gene here, uh, VAB18, has been reported a lot in the literature that should be, the expression of this gene should be associated with the survival. We can't see it in the TCGA normalized data sets. The p-value is pretty high. Uh, these two group is the high express, samples with the high expression of that gene and the low expression of that gene based on the based on the average expression. But we can see it in RV3. The, the reason is pretty clear. That, that dashed line here, this expression of that gene, the dashed line is the average expression where we, we divide the samples into two groups. If you use the TCG normalized data set, you usually divide sample into two groups based on their larvae size, not based on the biology. Because the majority of these guys pretty in the first batch and this guy's in the second batch. And when you get the expression right, we get the, 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 the survival rate. Right. There are many, many genes in the TCGA that they don't, have, they don't show that, that uh, known biology. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, this is the examples that I showed you guys. This is two examples. This is a UV, uh, UM cancer types, a kidney. These two cancer types in TCGA, they, are, they, are prof, they, are, they were generated in only one batch. We don't have a batch effects. But you can see here using the FPKM upper quarter, you add larvae size to them, you know. Genes have a negative correlation or positive correlation after using those scaling factors normalization. All right. Uh, these days, if you don't show any single cell slide, it's going to be not that interesting talk. <laughs> Yo, okay. Uh, it was very, very snap snappy uh, uh, slides about the paper. Please, if you are interested in the more details, what's happening in TCGA. Please have a look. Uh, at, 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 and then I, we, we tried to get REV3 to you know, for single cell. I know it has been used in the SC merge, but we wanted to, to, to use it, speed it up. In the REV3 that we have, it uh, was really too slow for, for single cell. Uh, for example, for a 200K cell, 200,000 cells with 10,000 genes, it took take 10 hours. No way, even myself, I don't use it if it's going to be that, that slow. Uh, we, we changed the, the statistical core of REV3, not just the, the, the core, the statistical core, plus we get some help from the C++ functions. And now with the 2 million cells, 2.5 million, it takes five minutes. It's this huge improvement, it's really fast. And still we, are, we can get make it faster. We have got more idea that we can make this, this uh, method for the single cell normalization faster. We have applied on the different uh, technologies, like a single uh, rna seq ataxic, and, and you know, seq especially in ataxic, you, you are dealing with 100,000 features if you look in the beans or the peaks. You need to have a really fast, fast methods. We have that one minute. Okay, I'm just gonna show you the, the one performance of fast REV3 and the single cells. This is a COVID, one of the largest single cells that I have. We've got 2.5 million cells. It's pretty, I think 16 studies, 580 donors. Uh, what, what I've done here, I just uh, compared with other methods, the most popular methods or the most you know, uh, good methods for single cell uh, uh, normalization and integration. The list is here. What I'm showing you here is the, the, the relationship between the PCA, the PCA here, the vector correlation, it shows how good you separate the cell types. The higher is better. You can see the RDV3 stand, the higher. It means the PCA has got a better correlation with the cell types. 
And these are the solvent coefficients. You can see the performance of the RV, fast RV3 in terms of the separating the cell types, which is, is pretty, pretty convincing. And this is the, the, the relationship between the PCA and the larvae size. It should stay low. It means that your, your, your PCA are not associated, associated with the larvae size. You can see the performance of RUT is pretty low. And this is the vector correlation when we, 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 we look at the, the batch differences. When you look at the batch differences, this vector correlation should stay pretty low. It means that your principal components are not associated with, with, with the batches. And this is the silhouette for, the, for these studies. Batch here is a different, different studies here. Okay, that's the, the summary. Yeah, the TCG is great, great resources. But uh, if you remove all those unwanted variations, we may, we may find better results or novel results, which we have found a couple of them by ourselves. Negative control genes, positive control genes, neg uh, uh, control samples is amazing for any experimental design. And the RUT PRPs is one of those methods that can deal with the data set that don't have a technical replicates. Yeah, thanks all people, uh, especially Terry and Tony for the great help. That's it. Thank you, Ramya. Yeah. Quick question from the audience. Any takers? All right. Thanks for the great talk, Ramya. The REV tree is amazing. Um, you know the um the so one of the plot that you show shows that the CPM and F, oh, um, all yeah. the. Yep. Uh, no, the one before that. Ah, this one, this yep. one here. So um, if you use something like SC transform, do you still see that effect? SC transform? Yeah. Uh, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't tried that, but I would say SC transform can deal with it. Can live with it. Yeah, can, can remove the lower besides here. Oh. I, 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 this is my, my kind, in theory, I see transform should, should remove it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Ramya, for your talk. And